You're listening to 3-Minute Marketing, where we interview the world's top growth marketing leaders and distill their knowledge into actionable, bite-sized insights. Now here's your host, Chris Mechanic. Hello and welcome to another episode of the 3-Minute Marketing Podcast. My name is Jared Flegel, executive producer of the podcast, filling in for Chris this week, who's out. On this episode, we have a very interesting guest, Tom Kerr. He's currently CMO at Greenfly, which is a digital media monetization platform for sports leagues and associations. And he's had an amazing career helping multiple software brands grow and exit over the years. On this episode, Tom brings a very interesting concept to light, which is is this idea of how the sale never ends, particularly in SaaS marketing. As marketers, we often get excited when we bring a new customer in the door. But just because someone becomes a customer doesn't mean they're going to stay a customer. So the question becomes, as marketers, what can we do to not only keep those customers on board over the long term, but also turn them into advocates and excited evangelists for our brand? That's the concept that Tom unpacks on this episode. Let's get into it. The sale never ends in at a SaaS company. The initial sale is actually just the start. It's the introduction to the customer. It gets you into the customer's environment, but you're really there to continue to grow, to continue to expand. And that first sale is always going to be much less than that customer is worth to the company in the end. And with a recurring revenue model, that's really, really powerful. The best way that I've, I've accomplished that is to put an overlay, a sales overlay department into customer success, whose only job is to create sales plans for uh, customers And they work with the customer success team, but they don't do any maintenance. They don't do anything but trying to arrange the next meeting to show the customer the value that they're providing. So they work with the sales team, but they also work with the customer success team. I was under the impression that customer success was somewhat, I mean, they're commission or aren't they like revenue based? Like some portion of their comp is commission. Sometimes they're more of a support organization. So when they are revenue comped, they are incented to sell. But what I've seen is they're usually more junior level people that aren't, that don't have a hunter mentality. They have, uh, all right, I'm going to farm this. I'm going to make sure that they're happy. I'm going to keep them informed and do my, you know, support support role. Mm-hmm. But it's rare to find someone with a, a dual skill set that actually will go actively seek out reference internal references and continue to sell to other departments yeah because that is even though you're in the same customer it's like a new sale Mm -hmm. and so they're rewarded for making sure that they retain the customer and maybe add more seats or whatever but they're rarely rewarded for selling another instance or getting cross-departmental communication and that's actually a hard job and their primary advocate their primary stakeholder isn't going to help them with that right Right, so it requires extra effort to rope those the right next set of people into the room, so that they can see you basically using whatever instance you have as an internal case study for continued growth. And uh, and how has that worked? What's happened when you've done that? With strategic accounts, you can yeah. double, triple the revenue that you expected in a year, really, by having a quarterly business review and showing them how impactful your software is. It obviously depends on how impactful it actually is, but right. having those meetings raises the level of visibility to, to the, the people who are pulling the purse strings. In our world, you know, we're a service business, obviously, more so than a SaaS, uh, but it's evident that the sale the, that the sale is only just the beginning because we're in there you know, actually doing the work in a hands-on right. way. But there's still even a sense of celebration and excitement at that sale and like a handoff, you know, it's like the salespeople is like, you know, handoff onto the next. Um, And we have actually encouraged, uh, I mean, more than encouraged our sales team to stay involved with the clients. There is always somewhat of a rub, you know, as you, because it, it, um, you know, it's kind of uh, each, each in the other's terrain in some way. Um, but I like that idea of like a formal and overlaid sales process on top of customer success. That's definitely very strong. Greenfly is an enterprise SaaS application that helps 
organizations move digital media around. So we empower uh, a lot of sports organizations, leagues, teams, uh, federations to gather digital media from the field, from the event, and deliver it to the athletes, deliver it to the broadcasters, deliver it to the sponsors, so that everyone has this really rich content they can use to continue to promote themselves, promote the event, promote the sport. Um, we also work in TV broadcast and uh, politics. Cool. Well, yeah, go check out greenfly.com if you've not already, or check out Tom Kerr on LinkedIn. It's K-U-H-R. Uh, Tom, you stay on the line. If you uh, are listening and you want to hear the rest of our conversation, stick around. It uh, will be a link around here somewhere uh, to the bonus footage, and we will talk soon. The more targeted you are to, to a persona, to, to your buying target and their immediate buying group, the more you can zone in on those people, the faster the sale goes, right? The more mm. you educate that team of five or 10 people that's going to make this big decision, um, it accelerates the sale and it raises the value of the sale. And mm. so doing a lot of media buying isn't something that I do generally, right? It's, it's very targeted, this building, it's account-based marketing more than anything. Uh, mm -hmm. very, very strategic. It's expensive because you are really trying to take very small segments of an audience and create more and more tailored materials that speak directly to their needs, problems, et cetera. So yeah. uh, we're not doing, well, we do some media buying, but it's, that's a very small part of what, what my team does right now. Interesting. So let's talk a little more about what your team, or I'm interested to hear about your, uh, your approach to ABM. It sounds interesting and unique. So when you have uh, an audience or you have a, you have a target list of customers. So we're, we target sports organizations, right? Right. There are only so many sports organizations in the world, right? right? When you're talking about a consumer brand, there are a lot of consumer brands, but when you're saying, all right, I want to look at every professional sports organization, you have a finite list. And that yep. finite list is 10,000 ish. Yeah. So I can go actually find out the head of marketing, the head of broadcast, the head of sponsorship sales for every single one of those entities mm -hmm. and create materials that should resonate with the challenges that they're dealing with today. Yeah. Uh, obviously finding them across multiple channels is challenging and that's a, a worldwide sort of marketing effort. So finding them in the Philippines is going to be a different challenge than finding someone in the UK or the U S. So, so what do you guys then do? So you've got this list um, and you start, you know, with the first account, there's five contacts from that account. So you customize some materials for them, but how do you then? Well, it's a combination it? of leveraging the sales team. So leveraging our sales development reps who are doing outbounding directly to uh, and trying to provide interesting materials yeah. that in a personal way towards these targets. We are supporting that with, uh, say, higher level air cover, right? So we're trying to create news stories, PR. We've got blog posts that we're writing that all support these direct marketing efforts. But we're also running targeted ads on LinkedIn and other, other networks and trade magazines, right? So if I'm in the sports industry, there are a number of trade publications that I'm probably going to be reading on a, at least occasional basis, right? So we're yeah. trying to combine all of these to create momentum around each individual strategic account to start with. But we, we find that even if we're not targeting accounts, we're getting inbound interest because these people are seeing our ads and they're seeing the news and they're talking to their friends. So it's a, uh, it, it generates momentum over time. You know, I recorded an episode earlier today uh, with this really interesting company called Handwritten, uh, which is, I don't know if you've seen that tool Bond, but uh, it essentially like creates very handwritten looking notes. Mm -hmm. So like if you were to take, and I, I had this thought on the 
um, pod with, with him and I mentioned it, but if you were to take or add into your sequence, uh, like a handwritten note type thing from one of the senior executives, uh, that could be like a power because the, the guest was telling me about these ridiculous response rates come like the, it was in a very different space, which was automotive dealerships, but sure. they would send out printed letters and get a whatever response rate versus the, uh, the ones from this tool handwritten with a W R Y T E N okay. um, got like 27 times that. So it might've been like the different, like, but just massive response rates. That sounds pretty awesome. Yeah. One of the things that we've had to deal with is people aren't in their offices, right? So yeah. if I'm working in automotive, I've got a garage or whatever where I physically have to go work on cars, but our yeah. our targets have been virtual for two years. So they're all working yeah. from home. So we found that we tried to do a mailing and it didn't get any response because no one was there to pick packages up. Well, I still get my mail. Do you? Do you get mail? I don't get mail. I mean, I go I'm to like, the office and it's like on my desk. Yeah. I don't, we, um, I've been to the office maybe three times in the last two years. So, oh, wow. So, but I wasn't getting, getting a lot of mail right? anyway. Yeah. So, that's wild. Um, anyway. Yeah. So, that would be an issue, definitely in B2B. Yeah. But I think, but you know, the CEOs back, probably still get their mail. Probably. Yeah. Someone's got to look through the bills. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sure it does circulate. Yeah, but that's a great idea. But no, your your ABM program sounds pretty sick. Sounds pretty advanced. Um, are you targeting just that one industry, sports, or do you have like multiple different programs going for multiple different industries? So that's the only industry we have ABM for because yeah. it is a pretty finite list. The next, uh, our next, I guess, target market are TV broadcasters. Mm -hmm. um, and especially sports broadcasters so sports adjacent and we haven't um, we haven't worked on developing a list out there yet mm -hmm. so we're doing more traditional demand gen kind of stuff nice um you know there's this really cool uh format on linkedin which is um messenger ads which can be quite useful i think from an abm perspective do you guys use those at all the linkedin no, messenger ads we um we do do LinkedIn outreach, but it's personalized by the SDRs. So it, uh, we're not using any sort of automated LinkedIn stuff. Yeah, you should check it out. It's a, um, it's a cheap but expensive format, meaning that on a cost per send basis, it's way cheaper than, uh, than what you would see normally in a LinkedIn ad. It's like 30 cents, I think, or something per send. Okay. Uh, and there's a super high open rate. So the, the cost per impression is pretty low, but the click-through rates can be hit or miss depending on, you know, what you're asking, what you're, or offering, how you're, or what you're offering. Yeah. Um, so the actual cost per click can end up being five, seven, 10 bucks still. Uh, but like, if you have a specific list, you know, you can basically laser target with them and save your, save your SDR some time. Sounds good. Yeah, I will check that out for sure. Check it out. Yeah, and if you uh, it's ever have pretty any... easy to test different messages in that case too, right? So you could totally. tone in on something that's going to resonate fairly quickly. Hundred percent. Yeah, that's another benefit of it. Just get a lot of eyeballs and a lot of data back quickly, and then like like you could use that to validate some of your other messaging. You know, like if you're sending out emails, you know, it could take you a while to send out a thousand emails, but you could get a thousand. Um, messenger impressions like in a day or less yeah. cool cool my man well hey i really enjoyed it thank you so much for coming on uh, i think it was a good solid episode and uh, for everyone still listening please take a second to check out greenfly.com uh, and tom kerr on linkedin thanks for having me it's, absolutely it's been a pleasure yep likewise happy friday to you and we will see you soon